Hey guys, welcome to PatternLab.London. I'm Ralph and today I'm going to show you how to create this really rather beautiful cap sleeve for your made to measure or let's say graded stretch dress block, which one of our pants was just basically released. So as you can see, Francesca is wearing her version on the right hand side here. It's a little bit difficult to see from the images, but it's this really rather gorgeous sort of like little cup sleeve. It's got two little seams at the top. It's also got this little tuck pleat that allows it to kick out from the side. So it's a really, really lovely sleeve. And we've actually teamed up with T Tanya from AYUK 2020. She's basically come up with this concept and we're basically digitizing her draft. So she, she, create, she created the sleeve draft and we're just simply digitizing it for you guys to uh, take a look at if uh, you want to do it digitally using Adobe Illustrator. And this is basically the draft of the sleeve here finished. And I'm going to show you how to create that. First of all, though, if we jump on over to PatternLab.London, if you want to follow this tutorial, you're probably going to need a stretch dress block. Now, there's one of two things you can do here. You can either create a, an account. You can then obviously um, add your measurements in the profiles page, all 26 of those measurements. So add all your 26 or 27 measurements into the chart there, then start drafting your block and then head over to the lab. So draft your block. And then here, if you go to casual wear, you'll find the stretch dress. So you can basically create your own made to measure stretch dress. You can also enter the stretch ratio of your fabric. So make sure it fits you and the material. Uh, we have different fit options. We have different dart options. There are length options as well, different necklines and also different sleeve styles. And then obviously you can purchase it either as a PDF or an AI or SVG file. We use ePatterns or AI files to um, adapt the pattern in Adobe Illustrator and they're all full size. If however you want to work with standard sizes, head on over to Design Lab, which is our sister site. And on Design Lab, you'll find pretty much in the first row, we have three different stretch dress variations. One that's for 50% stretch, one for 35% stretch, and one for 20% stretch. Just simply click on that product and you can purchase it from there. And we do sizes UK 4 all the way up to UK 24 which is great and obviously the sleeve is included as well. Um, also, if you're not familiar with digital pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator, simply head on over to the courses page on PatternLab.London, see courses pattern making course, scroll down and we have a whole free introduction to Adobe Illustrator and how to use it as a pattern making platform, adding seam allowance, transforming finished patterns into multi-page PDF sewing patterns, etc. And these are all completely free to watch. All of our video tutorials in pattern making are free to watch. And once again, you, if you want to um, carry on, you have different, let's say, necklines, different sleeve types, etc., which you can add to your blocks as well. Okay, but let's get back to the pattern drafting part of this tutorial. So thank you very much, Francesca. We'll just close that down. Let's just expand this. Okay, so once again, open up Adobe Illustrator. Now, I've basically taken... I've created a made to measure stretch dress for Francesca using Pattern Lab, and I've just simply saved it to my desktop. And if I just open it up in Adobe Illustrator, ooh, that's the SVG. So I've just basically opened it up in Adobe Illustrator. This is what you get. Okay, so this is the fully editable digital pattern that we're going to start manipulating and playing with. So I'm just simply going to get my big selection tool. Also, once again, if you're not familiar with pattern cutting, um, all of these tools and tricks and tips I'm gonna be working on today are all featured in that courses page on Pattern Lab. So as I said, have a look at that first of all, before you dive into this tutorial, it will really help you when it comes to getting to grasps with this tutorial. So I'm gonna get my big section tool and I've just opened up this document. I'm gonna get my big section tool. I'm gonna to click and drag over all of these. I'm just gonna go edit, copy. Let's jump into this page here. And let's just simply go edit and then paste. So this is my pattern. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of my existing finished pattern because obviously we want to actually recreate that. I'm just gonna get my big selection tool. I'm just gonna click and drag my sleeve off over to here. And let's just keep these here. So we've got a little bit of space to work with here, which is great. In fact, let's move them over a little bit more. Okay, so first of all, let's zoom in on our sleeve. Okay, so a few little tips when it comes to navigating the page here. If you hold down the space key on your keyboard, you'll get a little hand. If you then click and drag, it allows you to move around the page effortlessly. Also, if you hold down Command and Plus on your keyboard, you can zoom in. So Command, Minus, Minus, Minus zooms out. Command, Plus, Plus, Plus moves or zooms in. So with these two tools combined, you can really have a lot of control when it comes to moving around the page, which is very helpful. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is get our big selection tool. I'm going to click on my pattern and we're going to start drafting this little cap sleeve or cup sleeve. Um, yeah, okay, so let's just get big selection tool, select the pattern, let's go object, and then we're going to ungroup. 
Now you can see how Shift, Command, and G is the shortcut. We want to ungroup quite a few times. So to save us from actually having to go back in and then go ungroup, then object, ungroup, we're just going to go um, Shift, Command, G, 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 which will ungroup. And that just means that all these different elements are completely separate now, which is great. I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click and drag over this label here because I don't actually want that on my pattern when I'm actually pattern cutting. But we've also got the center line as well, and I want to keep that. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just simply click and drag over that one. That deselects it. Let's just go object and then group that label. So it's all one piece and we can move it off to the side. Right, okay, so we're gonna work with percentages. Uh, so basically every single measurement that I'm gonna be creating on this pattern is all based on percentages because obviously you might be working with a standard size 18 or four. I'm working with Francesca's particular size, which is roughly about a 10. So the measurements that I create for her are not gonna be relevant to the larger blocks or the smaller blocks. And so we're gonna use percentages. So let's first of all start off. So first I'm gonna measure the line, the whole, let's say the sleeve length of this pattern. So I'm just gonna get my small selection tool. I'm gonna to click on that line. I'm gonna go over to my document info. And if you haven't got this on your right hand column here, just go to window, sorry, view, no window. And then we go to document info, make sure it's ticked. Just click on document info, uh, click on document info. And you can see here it says 58.25 centimeters. If for some reason you've got inches or pixels or some other value, really simple, just go to Illustrator up here, go Preferences, Units, and you can change this to be inches, it can be centimeters, whatever you prefer to work in. Click OK. And then just go to Objects, where is it, Documents? Oh, let's, sorry, let's select that line. So, small selection tool, select the sleeve line. And let's just go to Objects. And 58.25, great. So 58.25, I'm gonna to go to my calculator and we're gonna go 58.25 divided by 100 because we're doing percentages times, and then it's gonna be 29%. So we want 29% of 58 centimeters or whatever your sleeve length is. You want 29% of your sleeve length and then just hit enter. So that gives us 16.8. So I'm going to mark a point. So I'm gonna get my little ellipse tool here. I'm just going to click and drag, hold down the shift key, click and drag just to create a point. I'm also going to give this a color. You don't need to do this, but I'm going to give this a color of pattern lab blue. And we can also take off the dash. So we're just basically creating a point here, a little circle. I'm going to place the center of that. So big section tool, click on the center of that circle and place it at the very top of your sleeve head. So let's see. So 29% of my sleeve length is 16.8 centimeters. Yours might be slightly different. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hit the enter key. So first of all, let's get our big section tool. Click on that circle or that point, hit the enter key. And this brings up the move dialog box. And we're gonna go horizontal zero. So we're not gonna go left or right, we're gonna go down. And we're gonna go down by 16.8 centimeters. Or what is it? 29% of the sleeve length, copy. So this is where our sleeve is actually going to end because it is a cap sleeve. So this is the base of the sleeve. I'm just gonna get my line tool. And I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down the shift and option key. So before I click, I'm going to hold down the shift and option key on my keyboard, click and then drag. And the shift and option key basically allows you to drag out either side. If I was to release that, we would just have a line that was coming out from one side. So once again, shift and option key, click and drag out. And what we're going to do is get our small selection tool, the white one. I'm going to click on this outline, go to my scissor tool. And I'm just going to snip here and snip here. So that line is simply a guideline to show us where we're going to be cutting our block. I'm also going to take the center lines, the small selection tool, get the cut tool and then snip. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over the whole lower part of this sleeve because we don't really need it anymore. And I'm going to hit backspace a few times. Okay, we're going to hit backspace a few times. Next, so get our small selection tool. I'm going to click and drag this line in because this is actually going to become our fold line because we're going to add a hem to this as well. So let's just change this to be, so I'm going to go to my, so I've select my line, my small selection tool click on the line tool or the stroke tool. And let's just make this a dash line of 10. Sorry, no, that's not right. It's 30 and 10 is our fold line. And there we go. So we have, it's a slightly different line to our guidelines. And let's just change that color to be black. So if you want to change the line color, just select the object you want to change and then go to, you see this is our stroke color and this is the fill color. Just simply click on those to bring them up and select which one we want to use. Double click and we just go black, click OK. Next, we want to basically create a hem, but we want it to mirror this, let's say sleeve panel. So I'm gonna get my small selection tool, or my big section tool, click on this sleeve here. 
I'm then going to right click and go transform reflect and then we're going to reflect horizontally so it reflects across the horizontal axis and we're going to click copy so we make a duplicate and then at my big section tool I'm going to find that point click and then drag that down and match it up with its mirror just there okay next we're going to get our big section tool I'm going to select this upper sleeve hold down the shift key to queue up your selection click on the lower part of the sleeve and then let's go to Pathfinder if you haven't got Pathfinder on your little side column here just go to window and then Pathfinder let's click on that and then we're going to go unite which is these two overlapping okay sometimes this happens so they haven't united that's fine it's because basically there's a slight gap between this point and this point so I'm just going to Get my big section tool, click on that lower one and then move it up ever so slightly. Hold down the shift key, click on the upper one and then just unite. And now you see they've been joined, which is great. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to my point. I'm gonna click on this point here. So big selection tool, click on that point. I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard and I'm gonna go down by 2.5 centimeters. So we're going down vertically by 2.5 centimeters. Click copy. So that is going to be our hemline. In other words, that's where the um, where this folds up to. So for example, this will go on the inside and we're going up by about 2.5. So let's just draw a line out from there. So let's just get my line tool. Once again, shift and option on my keyboard, hold that down, click and drag. I'm gonna get my small selection tool. I'm gonna click on the outline of my block. I'm gonna go to the scissor tool and I'm just gonna snip and snip. And then small selection tool, click and drag on that lower block, hit backspace a few times. We can even get rid of this guideline and we can even get rid of this point as well. And I'm just going to go click and drag over my sleeve panel and then just unite and that will basically seal that bottom edge. Okay, so looking good. I'm just going to take that down to 0.5 so it's not so bold. Brilliant. Okay, so we're now basically ready to move on to the next step. What I need to do is take two very important measurements. So I'm going to take this measurement. So if I get my small section tool, I'm going to click and drag or I'm just going to click on that line. Go to my document info and make sure it's on objects. Basically, if you have it on documents, you won't see what measurement that is. So go to objects and it shows you the measurement 24.6. So I'm just going to type in here 24.6 cm. This is just for my reference. You're going to want to know what this line width is. So if you want to record it on the sheet, go to your text tool, click and then go 24.6 cm. Let's just move that down. And we also want to know the length of this as well. Now we know this is 16.8. So let's just copy and paste a text in here. And let's go 18.6, was it? Or 16.8? It was 16.8. Great, so we now know the distance of these two lines. Let's just make that a little bit clearer. Arrows, there we go, perfect. Now I'm just gonna get my big section tool, I'm gonna click and drag over all of this pattern here. I'm gonna go copy, so I can Command C on my keyboard and then Command V to paste it. Place it off to the side, so this is gonna be my reference. And then here, let's just change these back to guidelines. So I'm just going to my stroke panel here. That's where you change all your stroke options. Let's take off those arrows. You don't necessarily need to do this, but it's just so I can highlight uh, those measurements. And let's make them black. Click OK. Let's go to dash as well. Looking good, and we can get rid of this point. OK, so now we know these two measurements. We're going to start slashing this block up into separate panels, and that's where we're going to expand them. And this basically creates this really lovely pleat detail here and this little pleat as well. So this, this seam and this pleat and the volume in the sleeve. We're going to start slashing our block up. OK, so first of all, let's have a look what we can do. So we're going to first of all draw a line. Let's get our line tool. I'm going to click at the very top of this sleeve here. You see how that matches and lines up? I'm going to click and drag down to the bottom. I'm going to hold down my shift key. The shift key locks it to the vertical. You see, if we didn't have the shift key, we could go anywhere. So I hold down the shift key and it locks it. Great, so I've drawn my line. I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click on that line. And I want to essentially copy this to the right. And we're going to go right by 12% of this line here. So 24.6. So let's go 24.6 divided by 100 times. It is, what is it? It's 12%. So 24.6 divided by 100 times 12 gives us 2.9 centimeters. So I'm going to my big section tool. I'm going to click on this middle line and go 2.9. And that's horizontal measurement to the right. So we're just going horizontally to the right. So it's 2.9 and vertically zero. Let's just hit copy. We're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side. It's so a big selection tool. Big section tool. Click on the line. Minus this time because if you want to go left, you have to add a minus to the front of that. If you go to the right, 
you just remove the minus. And let's just hit OK. So we now have two lines either side of the center line, both 2.9 centimeters, or 12% of whatever your, let's say, underarm line is. Okay, so next we're going to draw a line along this hem. Okay, so let's get our line tool. I'm just going to click at this point where that intersects and where that intersects as well. And then I'm going to get my big section tool, click on this line, and we're going to move this up. Okay, and we're going to move it up by 18% of this center line here, which is 16.8. So let's go to our calculator. So 16.8, it'll be different for you, divided by 100 times 18, which is 18% of whatever the measurement of this line is. Hit enter and that gives us 3.024. So let's get our big section tool. We're going to click on that line that we've drawn, hit the enter key, zero horizontally because we're not going left or right, we're going up. And then we're going to go minus, minus is to go up and positive is to go down. And we're going to go minus three. Let's hit copy. We can actually get rid of this existing line down here. Let's just keep our pattern board clean. So big section tool, click on that line, hit backspace a few times. Okay, so next we're gonna find the halfway point between these two points here on the underarm line. So I'm just gonna simply draw a little point. So really simple, go to your ellipse tool, click and drag holding down the shift key. And I get my big section tool, I'm gonna to click on the center of that and drag it to where that point intersects. I can then just go copy paste. I'm gonna drag in this one to here and then paste another one and then put it roughly where I think the center point is. And with my big section tool, I'm gonna to click on the top one, hold down the shift key, click and click. The shift key queues up your selection. I'm then going to go to a line, which are the tools up here, and I'm gonna horizontally align it and I'm also going to vertically align it. And that will create the halfway point. Let's go a big section tool, click, hold down the shift key, click and click. We're gonna copy and paste those. And I'm just gonna do exactly the same on the opposite side. Hold down the, let's go to, so with these selected, I'm gonna to go to the rotate tool, which is just here. It's also R on your keyboard. Click on that center point, click and drag over. So we're rotating around that point. And there we have the center line. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my pen tool, which is this one here. I'm gonna click on this little line just here. You see we, have get, we get that little line just below the pen tool. That means we're joining to this line here. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna to click to this center point, and then gonna click off with my small selection tool, go back to the pen tool, click, and then click. Let's go to the small selection tool. I'm just gonna take this line, so I'm gonna select the line first, that will allow me to find the point. Click and then drag out. So we're going past the block, but we're going through that point. Click and drag out, so past the block, but through that point. As you can see, all of these lines are going outside of my actual overall pattern. And the reason why we're going to do that, I'm going to show you in a minute, because we're going to slash this block up using these lines, but they need to extend past the outline of the block. Okay, so let's get my big section tool. I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to hold down my shift key to queue up the selection. Click on this line and click on this one. We're now going to go to the line width or the stroke width. So we've got these selected. We then go to, let's make it 0.2. That's going to create a very, very fine line. Just hit enter. So the reason why we're creating a very fine line is because I don't want to cut this block with a huge amount of, uh, so if these were, let's say, two points wide, we'd get quite a big cut line and our pattern would be, well, let's show you. So if I was to cut it like that, the pattern would start here and here, and so we're losing a lot of information in between. So if you make it as small as you can, 0.2 is pretty good, then we're only going to lose a very, very small amount of information, so really clean patterns. Okay, so with these selected, and we have just turned them into 0.2 point lines, I'm going to go to Object with them all selected and then go Expand. And this turns them from lines into objects. So now if I click and drag, you can see that it's an object and not a line. And we must use objects when it comes to slashing or cutting this block up. So I'm going to get my big section tool, click on this line, click on this line, hold down the shift key, click on this line. And I'm also going to click, hold down the shift key, click on the outline of my pattern. In fact, before I do that, I've selected these lines, I'm going to go object and then arrange and then bring to front. They must always be on top of the pattern that you're going to cut. So the cut lines must be on top of the pattern that you're going to cut. So now these are on top, I'm going to get my, hold down my shift key, big section tool and then click on the outline. So now we have these lines selected and the outline of the pattern. I'm going to go to pathfind and I'm going to go to minus front, click. And as you can see, we've now cut that pattern up into lots of different pieces, which is amazing. However, these are all grouped, so if you get your big section tool and you click on it, they're all grouped together, which is a problem because we want to separate these off. So just with your big section tool, click on the pattern, go to object, and then ungroup. Now you should only have to ungroup them once. 
which is great. And you can check that just by selecting each one with your big selection tool. Okay, so they're all been separated, but unfortunately at this point, we kind of want to make sure that this information is kept with this. So the notches need to be with the panel. So we're going to start to group them as individual panels. Let's also just get rid of these. And let's also get rid of that line. We don't necessarily need it. But also we have this line. And if I want to add this line to this panel, I need to snip it here and here so it's separated off. So now I'm just going to start separating these lines out. So small selection tool, click on this line here, go to my scissor tool. I'm just going to snip at this point and snip at this point. Let's also get this line. Scissor tool, snip. Okay, so now we can also get rid of these circles and these points. We don't need them anymore. So I'm just going to hit backspace a few times. So just click, hold down the shift key to speed them up. Hit backspace. Okay, so now big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over this panel. I'm going to go object and then group. But also the, sh the shortcut here is actually command G. So I'm just going to use that from now on. So I'm going to click and drag over the elements of this panel and go control G to group it. Same with this one, click and drag over the elements, control G, this one, control G, control G, control G. Now when I move them apart, they all have the information within them, which is fantastic. Okay, so now we're gonna to start to separate these out to create volume in the sleeve and also to create some darts and some other bits and pieces. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is I am going to take this whole panel here. Well, actually first I'm gonna figure out my percentages. So. As I said, this line is 24.6 centimeters. So let's take 24.6, yours will be slightly different. I'm gonna divide that by 100, I'm gonna times it by eight. So 8% 8 of that line is 1.9, 1.96. So get my big section tool, I'm gonna to click and drag over these two panels here, this one and this one. I'm gonna hit my enter key, and I'm gonna go 1.96 horizontally, because we're going to the right and zero vertically, and I'm gonna hit OK. Not copy, but OK. Let's do that again, 1.96, zero vertically, and hit OK. You can do exactly the same on the opposite side. Let's just move this over a bit. My big section tool, click and drag over both these panels, hit the Enter key, and we're going to go minus 1.96. We're going minus because we're moving to the left, positive to the right, minus to the left. Hit OK. Great. Next, we're gonna take the central panel, and we're going to move it up by 30% of this measurement. So 16.8, 16.8 divided by 100 times 30 works out to be 5.04. It'll be slightly different for you if you've got a larger or smaller block. So let's take this panel. It's a big section tool. Click on the panel, hit the enter key, zero over horizontally. We're going to go minus, so up 5.04. Hit OK. Brilliant. So now we're starting to separate this block out. So we've added let's say volume to the sleeve width at the um, or the top arm we're adding volume to the top arm and we're also increasing the sleeve cap height to create volume but next we need to start to rotate these out so we add even more volume and these will eventually become pleats or seams depending on how you stitch this up okay so first of all what we're going to do is i'm going to get the line tool and i'm just going to click on this point click and drag over to this point to measure the distance between those two points and as you can see it's 2.9 centimeters Let's just get rid of that. And here I'm going to go 2.9 divided by 100 times, and it's going to be 33%. So we're going to basically measure a point that's 33% the distance of this line. Hit enter, that's 0.95. So let's get to our lips tool, and let's just create a little point. Big section tool, click and drag, and then here we go, 0.97. So sorry, once again, with this point selected with your big selection tool, hit enter, and then 0.97 horizontally, but vertically nothing. Hit copy. You can do exactly the same on the opposite side, so minus 0.97, and let's go OK. Next, we're gonna get our line tool. I'm gonna to click on the center of this point and drag out to this point. Do exactly the same on the opposite side, click and drag. And these lines basically indicate uh, where your, uh, how much we're gonna rotate these panels out. And we're gonna use this as the rotation point. So get my big section tool, click and drag over this panel. Go to the rotation tool, click on this point, click and drag and rotate it until look, that line matches up with the guideline. Do the same on the opposite side, big selection tool, click and drag, go to the rotation point, click and drag, rotate it up. Fabulous. Okay, I can get rid of these points. I don't really need them at this time. So next we're gonna to start to sculpt the, let's say the sleeve head shaping. So to do that, I'm gonna get my line tool. I'm gonna to click and drag a line from this point to this point. 
Now I haven't let go yet, and it says 7.52 centimeters. I want to remember the distance of those two points. So 7.52, let's go 7.52 divided by 100, and this time we're gonna go times by, so it's 82%, we want to know what 82% of this line is. Hit enter and it's 6.16. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna times this by two, and I'll show you in a minute. So times by two, which gives us 12.3. Now I'm gonna create a circle, so let's go to the ellipse tool, click and go 12.3, 12.3. So the diameter of this circle is 12.3, which means the radius is half that, which is 6.1, which is what we're looking for. Just click OK, and that will create a lovely circle for you. Go to your big section tool, try and find the center, which is roughly here, click and drag, and drag it to that point. We're then gonna go edit, copy, edit, paste, and let's just click and drag that over to this other side. And we're looking at where these two lines intersect. So essentially, 6.1 something is basically where we're looking for from each side. That's why we create a diameter of 12, because we it, creating those circles makes it easier. So this is the location point we're looking for, and this will form the center of our dart, and also the sleeve head shaping. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna my big section tool, I'm gonna click on this line. Now when you click with the big section tool, it will show you the center point of that line. So with that, selected, I'm going to get my line tool, I'm going to click on this point, click and drag to that center point, like that, perfect. So this is the center of this pleat, and I'm going to click with my small section tool, I'm going to click on that line, then I'm going to click on the point, and I'm going to drag it down, but I want to extend that line, so I'm not moving it, I'm extending it, and you can see it's, it goes pink. So I'm just extending it through that point all the way down till we hit the center point, or the center of that sleeve head. Great, let's mark that, actually, let's mark it as a fold line. There we go. I also want to mark this point as well. This point's very important, because I want to get rid of these circles eventually. So I'm just going to create a little point like that. Let's just click and then drag it to the center. Great. Next, I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click this, and I'm going to hold down my shift key and click that to queue up the selection. I'm going to find the center point just here. I'm gonna click and drag and move it off to the opposite side because we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the opposite side. It just means I don't have to recreate those circles. So with this point on that point, or the center of the circle on that point, I'm gonna go to the rotation tool, click on the rotation tool, click, and then I'm gonna rotate that down and it should fall exactly, the distance should be the same. So there are my two circles created. Let's also draw a line. Let's get my line tool. I'm gonna to click and drag, draw a line between those two points. You can see that I already have my center point there. Let's get my line tool. I'm going to click from this point and drag it to the center of that line. We can then get our small section tool, click, click on that end point, and just drag it until we meet the center line. And it should technically meet the opposite one as well, or they should intersect. Okay, also, let's grab that point. So we can just get our big section tool, click, copy, paste. We can then click and drag that over to here to mark that location point. And I can now, with my big section tool, just select these two and get rid of those. We don't actually need those anymore. I'm gonna be consistent with my lines here. So this one, small section tool. If I click on that line and then go to the eyedropper tool, I can then, whatever, whatever I put the eyedropper on and click on, it'll basically take the attributes of that line, which is really helpful. So let's just make those two guidelines and let's make this one. Let's get the eyedropper tool, select that one. There we go. Okay, so next we're going to draw some more guidelines. I'm going to click, I'm going to get my line tool, and I'm going to click on this point and drag up to this point as well. I'm going to click and drag from this point to this point. Great. Also, I want to find the center of this line. So this is basically where we start to add these lovely sort of like sculpted um, seams or pleats. And I'll show you in a minute how we do that. But first, let's find the center of this line. So I'm going to get this point here. I'm going to just copy and paste it. Big section tool, click and drag it over to this point, I'm gonna paste it in again. Click and drag to roughly what I think the center is. So like here, for example, I'm gonna get my big section tool, I'm gonna to click on this point, hold down the shift key to queue up the selection, click on this point, click on this point, and then let's go a line and a line. That is the center of this line, which is great. Next, we're gonna get our rectangle tool. I'm just gonna click, which brings up a dialog box. I'm gonna type in one and one. So we're gonna click, click, create a rectangle that is one by one. There we go. So one cm by one cm. I'm gonna get the corner of that, it's a big section tool. I'm just gonna hover over the corner, click and then drag. I'm gonna use my rotation tool, click and then rotate that until those two lines are parallel. So we're squaring out from this line here. Next, let's just get our pen tool. 
Also, I'm going to go to Select and then All, which selects everything. I'm going to go to Object and then Lock Selection, which means that it's like a template. I can't actually edit it, which is really handy. So now when I get my pen tool, I'm not going to be picking up any of these lines. We're just going to be tracing on top. I'm going to click a point. So pen tool. I'm going to click a point here. I'm going to click a point on that center bit, which is one seam away from that line. Click and then click. And let's just get our eyedropper tool and let's take this pattern outline because this is going to be the outline of this dart or this, let's say this, this seam. I'm going to go to my anchor point tool, which is just here. I'm going to click on that point and drag. So if I drag out, the line gets more obtuse. If I go in really close, it's, it's not much of a curve. So I'm going to go roughly about halfway. So halfway between these two points. So I'm going to go about halfway between them. And I'm also going to use that right angle to guide me. This tool can be a little bit tricky to get the hang of. So play around with it. But essentially, you want something that looks like that. But luckily, we don't have to do this for every single piece here. We can just simply copy this and paste it. But first of all, I'm going to go Object, Unlock All just to get everything uh, back to normal. Get my big selection tool, I'm just gonna click and drag over these points and just hit backspace a few times. We don't actually need this anymore. Same with this point, just get rid of them. Get my big selection tool, click on this line, hold down the right, sorry, hold down, what is it? Double, just second click, right click, right click on your mouse, which brings up this little dialogue and go to transform, reflect, and we're gonna copy vertical. Click copy, we're then gonna get our big selection tool, Click on this point, drag it to this point, hold, get to rotation tool, click on that point, and then click and drag that up. So we're basically mirror imaging this across this line here, which is great. Makes it much easier than having to redraft this. And we know that these two lines are gonna match up perfectly. Next, big section tool, click on this line, hold down the shift key, click on this line as well to queue up the sections. Gonna hold down to right click again, transform, reflect, vertical, copy. And I'm just going to drag that point over to that circle there. So once again, once you've got it transformed, it's a big section tool, click and drag on that lower edge and just match it up with that point there. And once again, we can get rid of this circle. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so now we're starting to create this beautiful, let's say, uh, seam detailing on the top here. So we've got the volume in the sleeve with these darts, and this is the center of those darts. And this is basically what we're going to be stitching up. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to start creating the final finished outline of our pattern because these are all the bits that go into making it. But we want to actually get the finished final outline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start snipping. See how this panel is all joined? I want to snip it here and snip it here and then add it to these lines so we get this lovely outline. So what I'm going to do is with a small section tool, I'm going to click on this panel, go to my cut tool, and I'm just going to snip and snip. And just to show you as I go along how I'm snipping this, I'm also going to get my small section tool. You don't have to do this, but as long as there's a snip, that's great. I'm going to click on this panel here. You see how it's been snipped away from the top edge. I'm then going to go to my eyedropper tool, and I'm just going to get the attributes of that blue. So you can see that it is separated. Same with this one. I'm just going to get my so small section tool. I'm going to click on the outline. I'm going to go to my scissors tool. I'm going to snip here, and I'm going to snip here. And once again, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to there we go, turn that into a guideline. So small section tool, snip snip let's select that attribute there we go same with these ones so this one we're going to completely ignore so i'm just going to turn that into there we go let's get this panel here scissor let's snip it here and here same with this one snip it here and here we can then turn this into guidelines so now you can kind of see the vague outline of our pattern and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically get my small section tool. I'm going to click and drag over all of my blue lines. So I'm not selecting the black ones. I'm just going to select all the blue ones I can. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and just click on the other blue lines to queue up that selection. And I'm going to go object and then lock selection. So now the only thing that's actually editable is the outlines of my block. But at the moment, they're all cut up into very small separate individual pieces, which is a pain because if I wanted to move them around, it would be an issue. So now what I'm going to do is get my small section tool. I'm going to click and drag over these two points because they're two separate points. I'm going to click and drag, right click, join. I'm going to click over, click and drag over these two points. And this is with our small selection tool, okay? Really important to use the small selection tool. Click and drag, right click, join. Click and drag, right click, join. Click and drag over those two points, right click, join. Same here. Just going to do that all the way around, just joining all those lines together. Join, and then finally that one, join, and then just to make thing, make sure it's completely one whole, I'm going to select it, go to Pathfinder, and then go Unite, and that just makes sure there's no lines or openings 
no openings on that block. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add some funky little curvature to this underarm seam here. So I'm going to get my small selection tool, click on that point, or click on that line, then click on that point. Now if you don't see a little element appearing here, it means there's two points there. So you go to your minus or delete anchor point, click on one. Let's have a look, click it again, and there you go, you've got this little element. So it just basically means there were two points there originally. So there's two points there now. If I remove a point and click back on it, you'll see that this appears, and that just allows you to drag that out, to curve that to underarm line. Same with this one. I'm assuming there's one point or two points. There is. So that would be one. That would be two. So here I'm just going to click on that point with my small selection tool and then click and drag that out. Lovely. Okay, so next, let's have a look. Let's start to add some detailing and some labels and some seam allowance. So let's get my line tool. And you see how we have this little line here. I'm going to click and drag from this point to this point. And let's go to our big section tool. I'm going to click. I'm going to go copy and then paste. I'm just going to drag this down pretty much to here. Okay, you see how this is parallel. So this is basically how you, where your dart or your pleat opens. So if we look at our pattern, you see this little bit here? So basically we're just joining those. We're just stitching that together. And so that just indicates where we have to stitch to and from. Okay, so we just basically pinch these together and we stitch them. So I'm just going to create another line between these two pieces. Go to my stroke options and then go create an arrow on the bottom edge. That just indicates that we're actually joining these two pieces together. Okay, so let's start adding some other bits and pieces to this. So I'm gonna get my line tool, I'm gonna to click and drag along our, let's say the hemline or the fold, and I'm gonna indicate that as stroke dash line 3010, which is basically a fold for us. 1.5, great. So that's my fold line. So this will basically fold around that and be stitched up. And we also have some notches that we want to add as well, but we'll do that in a minute. First of all, get my small section tool. I'm going to click on the outline. It's all one outline. Go to object, path, and then go offset path. And because this is stretch, I'm going to use 0.7 centimeters for the seam allowance. Uh, you can use whatever you want, but my serger or overlocker uses 0.7. So I'm just going to type that in here, 0.7, click OK. And we have one click seam allowance. Let's just up the weight of that line to be two. So we know that this is our cut line and this is our pattern line. And let's start to remove some issues here. So this doesn't ever normally happen. I'm not sure why this is happening, but there's no reason why you can't fix it. I would just simply go to your anchor point or delete anchor point and just delete this point here and delete this point here. And then you can always add anchor points. And then get the small section tool, just click and move that out ever so slightly. There we go. It's not perfect, but I think when you stitch it, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We can add an anchor point here. Actually, you know what? Let's add one there and add one there and then minus that one. That looks a bit better. Okay, so next let's add some notches. So let's get our line tool. So let's just click and drag here. We're gonna click and drag here and click and drag here. Because essentially this is where these two points are gonna meet when we stitch them up. And this is gonna be a stitch seam, this is gonna be a stitch seam. So I'm just indicating those with notches. I'm just clicking and dragging that line. So let's get your line tool. Find the starting point, click and drag, and then just, there we go. You want it to be roughly 90 degrees to your pattern line at all points, or all times. Let's also do the same with the armhole seam allowance. Click and drag, click and drag. There's this one, click and drag. And you know what, we could probably add one here as well, and one here as well. Great, so this is looking nicer. It's still quite messy because we have all these blue lines inside. So what I'm gonna do is with my big section tool, I'm gonna click Right, first of all, sorry. So the blue lines are locked at the moment, which is good. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my big section tool. I'm gonna click and drag over this whole object here. I'm gonna go edit, copy, edit, paste, and just move it off to the side. So as you can see, it's good to have all of our lines in there because it, it shows us kind of what we did to create that pattern. Although saying that, I don't have my important seams, which is my fold. So let's go back. Okay, let's go object and then unlock all. Let's do this properly. So I'm gonna start selecting the lines I want to take with me or, or removing the lines I don't want. So what I'll do is I'm a big section tool. I'm gonna to copy and paste all of this. Let's move it over to the side and I'm gonna start deleting lines I don't want. So big section tool, click on this line, hit backspace a few times, backspace, backspace, select it and then just delete it. Delete, we can get rid of this as well, get rid of this as well. But obviously we want these fold lines because it's important. 
let's just make them black. And also, small selection tool, click on that point, just drag it in to the center of that dart. Great stuff. I think that's pretty much our pattern completed. So just to make sure, um, once it's done, because obviously you want to move this around, I want to make sure it's all grouped. So get your big selection tool, click and drag over the whole element, go object, and then group. And that way, when you move it, it moves as one whole object, which is handy. Okay, so we've completed our sleeve. Let's just go back and add our labels. So big section tool, click and drag over this. We can then just simply click and drag and move it into our final sleeve pattern. You know what, this is quite big. It's a little bit ungainly. So I might get this little anchor here. And if you hold down the shift key, it'll constrain the proportions. If you don't, you can change it. So I'd say hold down the shift key, just drag it, let's place it there. Let's also, so get the text tool, we're going to type in here, cup. So it's cup sleeve panel. And for some reason, these aren't centralized. So I'm just going to get my small selection tool, click, click. We're going to go to paragraph. Let's align them centrally. And then let's move this into the center. And then once again, let's just big section tool, grab all of this and go object and then group. Great stuff. Okay, so that's our sleeve complete. Now let's add seam allowance to our pattern just to finish off that block. So small section tool, click and drag over both these patterns, object, path, offset path, 0.7. We can then change the stroke width. Let's make it two. And also small section tool, we want to have the center front as a fold line. So grab that line, click and just drag it in. Same with this one, the back, click and drag it in. And there we have our finished pattern, which is looking gorgeous. Okay, there we go. Let's just make sure these are all grouped. Great stuff. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, once again, we collaborated with um, Tanya from AYUK2020. She originally came up with this concept for the sleeve, and we're just simply translating it into a digitized format. But she's actually created the manual or the paper pattern cutting method for this sleeve. So obviously, um, on this blog post or on this, let's say, pattern cutting tutorial post, we have links to her profile on Pattern Lab, and we also have links to that tutorial on her YouTube channel. So take a look at that. Subscribe, link, like, love all that kind of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the various different social media accounts. It just gives you a way of keeping up to date with all the different pattern making tutorials and content that we kind of create and come up with. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And good luck with your sleeve draft, sleeve draft of the cup sleeve pattern making tutorial. Thanks a lot. See you soon.